want to talk about starting a business when you've already made a considerable technology investment. Um, this comes up a lot with PhD research. So we've been doing that for years and we've actually made some pretty significant breakthroughs. Uh, in this situation we'll say that we've invented a new kind of uh, test tube which has all sorts of huge benefits. Uh, it allows you to do your experiments faster, uh, you get better, more consistent results. Um, generally, we feel that kind of every scientist in the world should be using our new test tubes uh, in their labs, because even though they're more expensive, you have to run many fewer experiments to get statistically significant results, and that saves them a lot of time and money. So it's great, but we have no idea how to bring it to the market. Um, we've got no idea exactly who would be using it. Um, you know, like I say, they are they are more expensive, so for which scientists does the benefits it brings outweigh the uh, the extra costs? And then how should we be charging for it? Um, there are a lot of options. And the challenge here is that we don't have a lot of flexibility with our product. Um, you know, we've built these, these test tubes. And there's a small team usually. <laughs> so you don't have uh, huge sales resources. The task that you need to find out now is you need to figure out which of the various ways of selling the thing are going to work. You need to find out what your distribution channel is going to be, so what the pricing is going to be, what the distribution channel is going to be, um, who the customers are going to be, and then also kind of once you know who the customers are and you've talked to them a little bit, you'll find out you've got all these advantages that you believe in, but your customers don't necessarily care about all of them, so you'll find out about um, the particular benefits for your mystery customer. Um, so that's where we're trying to get to. We don't know it yet. Um, in the short term, you know, when you've got a ton of unknowns, what you're basically trying to do is make yourself a to-do list. So you want to find out what the top three or four things you should be working on are. And then once you knock out those three or four things, um, you can start working on others. Uh, and, and these are basically, I call it a to-do list. It could be, they're experiments. They could be MVPs is the way Lean Startup talks about them. Um, but basically, these are just going to hopefully uh, get rid of some of these question marks when you when you do it. So let's run through some options. Um, revenue streams, we still don't know what it's going to be, but we've got some uh, some possibilities. So actually, let's start with customers. That's easier. Um, so we could sell direct to the labs. Um, and if we did that, so let's just give that a color so we can tell it apart. Um, then we're probably going to be charging you know, pennies per test tube. Um, and in that case, um, We've been doing PhD research up until now, but that's no longer going to cut it. Um, so if we're selling direct to the lab and we're charging per tube, then either we're our core activity is sort of manufacturing um, or sales. Manufacturing, sales. Um, you know, and we may or may not like that. Uh, the channel, you know, we need to figure it out. Um, it could possibly be through the universities. It could possibly be um, direct sales to the lab. It depends how much money a single lab's worth. If a lab's worth ten thousand dollars, if we got them using our test tubes, then it's probably worth doing direct sales. If they're only worth a few hundred, then we really need something more scalable. Um, so, at this point, I have no idea how many test tubes a lab would buy. Um, so I'm not just going to put a guess in there. I'm going to sort of leave that and wait until I figure something else out before I, before I decide. Um, now manufacturing and sales, you know, we don't need to do everything. The key activities are kind of what allows us to create the product. And if there's parts in here that we don't want to do, like let's say we don't want to do the manufacturing, like we know, um, we know scientists, we feel like we can talk to them convincingly, so we're happy doing sales to them. We don't want to do the manufacturing though, so we can move it from a key activity that we do into something one of our partners does. Um, so we could we could partner up with other manufacturing firms and they could um, possibly ship it to us. They could maybe even do the order fulfillment themselves. Um, and so that would mean we wouldn't even have to have the warehouses or um, you know do the packaging or the mailing. They can just build it and then mail it directly to the people who have ordered it through our sales. 
Um, so that might work. We would need to find out though, right? So the first step to find out if this is practical, we can sort of look at it. I'm actually. Um, so for the blue business plan, we need to know, we need to talk to a bunch of lab ad, admins um, and figure out who gets to spend the money <laughs> for the labs. You know, what's their budget? How do they spend money? Would they use this thing? Would they use this thing is probably the main one. Um, would they use it? And how do they budget their money? And that is horribly formatted. Oof. Sorry about this. Okay, I'll we'll just go with that. Um, and once we know that, we'll basically know if this model would work. Uh, if they don't have any sort of discretionary budget for these purchases, or you're going to have to get in there, you know, years in advance to become part of next next year's grant request, then this might be a little bit tedious for you. Um, so another kind of customer segment that we could grab is we could go to the universities um, and anyone doing, let's just say, go to the um, the organizations doing the research. So this is like unis, hospitals, um, groups like that. I'll give this a different color. Um, and here the idea is that they have lots of their own labs, and so you know they could sell it in. So these organizations, the um, the unis, there's two different ways we could do it. They could potentially either become a channel for us where they're kind of recommending it and the lab is still footing the bill, or they could be a customer. Um, and in that case, the lab could even be our channel because the lab, we could convince the professors in the labs that they really need this, and then they're kind of pitching it up to their university to get budgets for the whole school. Um, you know, I won't go through the whole thing here, but basically it's a similar model, um, except this is presumably uh, each sale is bigger, so it makes doing manual sales maybe a little bit more practical. Um, another model we could go with, and this might have the same customer segments, but it's a very different revenue stream, is instead of selling the tubes, we could sell the patents. So we could, um, or patent, I guess, if you're in America. <laughs> um, and they're the revenue, so here the, oops, sorry. Um, so the blue benefit, and also the green benefit is that you get faster, better research. Um, the pink benefit, we're going to be going to kind of medical product producers, producers, um, or this could be other researchers, basically anyone whose job it is to figure out how to make money off of um, scientific innovation. So, so I'll make this scientific instead of medical. Medical is a little bit specific for now. And we're going to license them the patents to uh, the stuff we've done. The channel, I have absolutely no idea what it is. Um, still, channel is a huge mystery. Uh, and the revenue stream here um, for the pink plan. And remember, like all of these things aren't running simultaneously. They're kind of different versions. So the blue post-its make up one possible business model. The pink post-its make up a different business model. Um, you know, I just do this to keep my thoughts separate while I'm brainstorming. Um, so here it might be um, like a 20% cut or some cut, we really don't know. A cut of eventual product revenue. Um, here if they do a very bad job um, figuring out how to make money off of our patents and our manufacturing process, then we're not going to make much money. But the benefit is that we don't have any of this. Uh, our key activity here goes back to what it originally was, which is research. And if that's something that we're really good at, you know, then then that could be a good fit for us. We can kind of let someone else deal with all of the bring it to market. And uh, our key partners, we've just got these other kind of um, the whatever, the manufacturers, the researchers, the I don't even know what they'd be, sort of bring it to market people. Um, and they're going to kind of do all the work for us, which is 
terrific, maybe. <laughs> so that seems appealing, but it depends on a bunch. Uh, like, what percent cut is this? How much money do we think they can make? Um, we're not going to want to rely on this probably without talking to some of the labs ourselves because, you know, it'd be good to be able to give people an initial idea of how it could be used. Um, but anyway, that gives us a good idea of what kind of the next couple things we should do are. All of these seem possibly viable, but we don't have good evidence for any of them. So I still think the first thing we should do is talk to a bunch of lab admins. Um, if the lab admins are going crazy and they really like it, oops, then we should also um, talk to several um, research organizers. Um, and these are the groups from the from the university or the hospital. Um, so this is this green customer segment where they've got several labs under their control and under their budget. Uh, if the lab admins or if the people who are actually doing the research don't want it, then there's no point going above them because then we're selling a dud product. Um, but if those people don't want it or we think we can't make enough money from them, uh, then it makes good sense to figure out what the licensing rights are. And we can do that one really quickly just by talking to probably one knowledgeable person at our own university. We don't need to go very far afield for that. Uh, and if they're decent, you know, if, if we think that would work and if it's worked for other similar types of products, you know, our research advisor would know about all this, then we can start um, talking to partners who could do the licensing and bring it to market. Um, so yeah, so that's basically our one, two, three. Um, one is talk to the, the researchers themselves. Second is talk to their bosses. Um, and then third is figure out what the licensing rights are. And if they're good, um, start talking to people who have a history of licensing these products. Um, once we start to get data from these, we're going to go back. Like we may find once we've talked to the admins that it completely invalidates talking to their bosses. Um, so at that point, we come in and we'd scrap this, and we'd you know we'd realize that we can't sell direct to the labs, or maybe we were only talking to medical researchers, and we still need to talk to um, I don't know chemists or someone doing something very different who maybe has different customer needs. Um, but you'd keep feeding the results of these experiments back into your canvas, and then creating your next kind of three things that you want to be doing.